He is known for being a medieval English philosopher and Franciscan friar who emphasized the study of nature through empiricism. He is recognized for being one of the earliest European advocates of the modern scientific method, applying the empirical method of Ibn al-Haytham to observations in texts attributed to Aristotle. His name is Roger Bacon. In the depths of medieval England, there lived a man whose thirst for knowledge knew no bounds. His name was Roger Bacon, a philosopher and Franciscan friar who became known as Dr. Mirabilis, or the, Wonderful Teacher. Bacon's insatiable curiosity led him to place great importance on the study of nature through empirical observation, a radical approach in his time. Bacon's reputation grew, and he became renowned for his wisdom and intellect. However, his fame was not without controversy. Some considered him a wizard, fascinated by the tales of his mechanical and necromantic brazen head. But Bacon was much more than a mystical figure. He delved into the works of Aristotle, applying the empirical method of Ibn al-Haytham to his observations. Through his experiments, Bacon discovered that the results he obtained often differed from what the revered Aristotle had predicted. This revelation emphasized the importance of empirical testing and set Bacon on a path to challenge long-standing beliefs. His dedication to the scientific method and empirical evidence led some to credit him as one of the earliest advocates of this approach in Europe. Bacon's contributions extended beyond his scientific pursuits. His work on linguistics, particularly his exposition of a universal grammar, showcased his intellectual depth. Although he relied on books in the scholastic tradition, Bacon's insights were groundbreaking for his time. He even played a role in revising the medieval university curriculum, introducing the study of optics alongside the traditional quadrivium. One of Bacon's most notable achievements was his major work, the Opus Magus. In 1267, at the request of Pope Clement IV, Bacon sent this comprehensive treatise to Rome. Among the diverse topics covered, Bacon was the first in Europe to record the formula for gunpowder, even though its invention originated in China. Roger Bacon's legacy extends far beyond his medieval existence. His commitment to empirical observation and the scientific method laid the foundation for future generations of thinkers. While he faced skepticism and controversy in his time, Bacon's ideas would eventually shape the course of scientific inquiry and inspire countless others to seek knowledge through observation and experimentation. Roger Bacon, a renowned philosopher of the 13th century, was known for his groundbreaking contributions to various fields of study. Born in Somerset, England, in the early 13th century, Bacon's exact date of birth remains a matter of debate among scholars. While some argue for a birth date around 1220, others suggest it could be as early as 1210 or as late as 1215. Nevertheless, it is clear that Bacon hailed from a well-off family and received his education at Oxford. During his time at Oxford, Bacon immersed himself in the works of notable scholars like Robert Grostest, whose teachings greatly influenced him. Although there is no evidence that Bacon ever received a doctorate, his expertise in Aristotle's philosophy made him a respected lecturer at the university. In fact, there are records of a caustic cleric named Roger Bacon speaking before the king at Oxford in 1233, showcasing his intellectual prowess. In the late 1230s or early 1240s, Bacon relocated to the University of Paris, where he taught a range of subjects, including Latin grammar, Aristotelian logic, arithmetic, geometry, and the mathematical aspects of astronomy and music. His colleagues at the university included renowned figures such as Robert Kilwardby, Albertus Magnus, and Peter of Spain. However, by 1247 or soon after, Bacon left his position in Paris, and his whereabouts during the following decade remain uncertain. During this period, Bacon delved into the study of optics, exploring the works of Greek and Arabic scholars. It is believed that he took a two-year break from his studies, as mentioned in his Opus Tertium. In the late 1250s, political turmoil erupted in England due to resentment against the king's favoritism toward his Poitivan relatives. Bacon's own family, considered royal partisans, faced repercussions, with their property seized and some members forced into exile. In 1256 or 1257, Bacon joined the Franciscan order, following in the footsteps of other scholarly English Franciscans like Grostest and Adam Marsh. However, his scholarly activities were curtailed after 1260 by a statute that prohibited the publication of books or pamphlets by friars without prior approval. Bacon found himself assigned to menial tasks, which limited his time for contemplation and scholarly pursuits. By the mid-1260s, Bacon sought patrons who could help him secure permission and funding for his return to Oxford. One such patron was Guy de Fawkes, Bishop of Narbonne and later Pope Clement IV. Bacon's messenger, Raymond of Leon, mistakenly conveyed the impression that Bacon had already completed a summary of the sciences, leading Guy to believe he had accomplished a significant work. However, Bacon lacked the resources to undertake such a project, and his attempts to secure funding from his family were thwarted by the ongoing Second Baron's War. 
Despite the challenges, Bacon's relentless pursuit of knowledge and his desire to share his insights remained undeterred. His story serves as a reminder of the importance of perseverance and the pursuit of intellectual growth, even in the face of adversity. In the realm of medieval European philosophy, Roger Bacon emerged as a bold and innovative thinker who challenged the prevailing beliefs of his time. While many philosophers relied on the authority of church fathers and secondary translations of Plato and Aristotle, Bacon sought a different approach. He embraced Aristotle's emphasis on collecting facts before deducing scientific truths, going against the practices of his contemporaries. As he eloquently stated, thence cometh quiet to the mind. But Bacon's revolutionary ideas did not stop there. He recognized the need for reform in theology as well. Rather than engaging in endless debates over minor philosophical distinctions, Bacon believed that theologians should focus their attention on the Bible itself. He advocated for a thorough understanding of the original languages in which it was written. Fluent in multiple languages, Bacon lamented the corruptions of scripture that had occurred over time. He also criticized the mistranslations and misinterpretations of the works of Greek philosophers by scholars working in Latin. Additionally, Bacon saw the importance of integrating science into the medieval curriculum. He argued for the education of theologians in scientific knowledge, realizing that a well-rounded understanding of both theology and science was crucial. Bacon's forward-thinking approach sought to bridge the gap between these two disciplines, recognizing that they were not mutually exclusive but rather intertwined in the pursuit of truth. Bacon's philosophy offers valuable insights for our daily lives. His emphasis on collecting facts and seeking knowledge before deducing truths encourages us to approach problems with open-mindedness and intellectual curiosity. By embracing his call for reform in theology, we can strive for a deeper understanding of religious texts and challenge the misconceptions that may have arisen over time. Moreover, Bacon's recognition of the importance of science reminds us of the value of empirical evidence and the need to integrate scientific knowledge into our broader understanding of the world. In conclusion, Roger Bacon's philosophy stands as a testament to his intellectual courage and visionary thinking. His insistence on the collection of facts, reform in theology, and the integration of science continues to resonate with us today. By following in his footsteps, we can navigate the complexities of life with a clearer and more enlightened perspective. In Roger Bacon's Opus Magus, his groundbreaking work from 1267, he delves into a wide range of subjects, including mathematics, optics, alchemy, and astronomy. Divided into seven sections, the Opus Magus presents Bacon's ideas on various topics, such as the causes of human ignorance, the usefulness of grammar and mathematics, the science of perspective, experimental knowledge, and a philosophy of morality. But the Opus Magus was more than just a comprehensive treatise. Bacon envisioned it as a call to reform the medieval university curriculum, advocating for the inclusion of new subjects like perspective, astronomy, alchemy, agriculture, medicine, and experimental science. He sought to establish a library or encyclopedia that would bring together experts to compose definitive texts on these subjects. In his work, Bacon didn't shy away from criticizing his contemporaries. He particularly took aim at Alexander of Hales and Albertus Magnus, who were highly esteemed despite acquiring their knowledge of Aristotle secondhand during their preaching careers. Bacon saw this as a monstrous situation, stating, never in the world such monstrosity occurred before. Bacon also recognized the wisdom of Islamic thinkers and defended the integration of Islamic philosophy into Christian learning. He held them in high regard, referring to them as, both philosophers and sacred writers. Moreover, Bacon proposed a calendrical reform similar to the one that would eventually be implemented in 1582 under Pope Gregory XIII. In his exploration of optics, Bacon drew on the works of Alhazen, Ptolemy, Robert Grostest, and Ibn Saul. He examined the physiology of eyesight, the anatomy of the eye and brain, and various aspects of vision, such as light, distance, position, size, and the use of mirrors and lenses. His insights were based on the Latin translations of these Islamic and Greek texts. Bacon's Opus Magus not only expanded the boundaries of knowledge in various fields but also challenged the established thinking of his time. His ideas on education reform, integration of different philosophical traditions, and scientific advancements continue to be relevant today. Bacon's work reminds us of the importance of questioning and critically examining the knowledge we inherit, and the potential for progress when we embrace new ideas and perspectives. Do you want to explore more philosophers? Who do you want to see featured next? Subscribe and leave a comment below to let me know. I'll see you in the next video.